Okay, in this video, we're going to prove a reduction formula for the integral of sine raised to the power of nx dx. And the reduction formula is as follows. It says if you integrate that, you get negative sine of n minus 1 x times cosine x, all of that divided by n, plus n minus 1 divided by n multiplied by the integral of sine raised to the power of n minus 2 of x dx. And again, this is for n greater than or equal to 2. So again, in this video, all I'm going to do is justify this formula. I'm not going to do any examples using this formula, but perhaps in another video, um, I will do that. So the basic idea to, to justify this is we're just going to use some algebra. We're going to use some integration by parts, and we're going to use a trig identity at one point, and then after that, again, I think it's just a little bit of algebra, keeping track of things a little bit, and I don't know, hopefully that's all there is to it. So, okay, so let's start off by rewriting our integral sine of nx, sine raised to the power of nx dx. We're going to break this up, okay, so I'm just going to break this up. Uh, my sine of nx, I'm going to break that up as sine raised to the power of n minus 1 of x multiplied by sine x. So again, right, if you just multiply these back together, you would have sine raised to the power of n. And now I'm going to use good old integration by parts. So remember, integration by parts says the integral of u dv that equals the in, that equals excuse me u times v minus the integral of v du. Okay, so in this case, the um, the sine of n minus one x that's going to be playing the role of my u, and then sine x dx that's going to be my dv. Okay, so if this is my u and this is my dv, well, we have to calculate du and we have to calculate v. So to get du, we just take the derivative. So again, we've got sine of x raised to the power of n minus 1. Well, the n minus 1 would come out front. We would take 1 away from that exponent, so that would leave us with n minus 2. Don't forget to use the good old chain rule, because now we have to take the derivative of sine x. That'll give us cosine x. And let's tack on our dx. So if dv is equal to sine x dx, well, we integrate that to get our value for v. And the integral of sine x, or the antiderivative of sine x, will be negative cosine x. And again, you know, if we're talking about integrals, we would do plus c, but whatever. We'll tack that on um, eventually. Or we'll actually see that we don't even really have to for this one. All right, so now I'm going to use integration by parts. I'm going to use integration by parts, and I'm going to rewrite this integral here on the right side. So it says we would have u times v. So again, u is sine raised to the power of n minus 1 times x. I'm going to try to be careful here, make sure I don't do anything, make any little mistakes. So u times v, v is negative cosine x minus the integral of v. So again, that's negative cosine x. Multiply that by our du. So du is this long term n minus 1 sine of, excuse me, sine raised to the power of n minus 2 of x times cosine x dx. Okay, so that's what we've got so far here. And now what I'm going to do is let me rewrite this one more time. And then I'm going to basically start working on this integral on the right side. And then we'll put everything back together at the end. So, okay, so I'm going to factor this negative out front. So we've got negative sine of n minus 1 of x multiplied by cosine x. Notice we have a negative and this negative out front. We can make that a positive. So I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. The n minus 1, well, that's just a constant. So we can pull that out front as well. Okay, so we got rid of the negative. So let's see, um, we've got cosine x times cosine x. I can write that as cosine squared x. And then we still have this sine of n minus 2 of x dx. So that's where we're at so far. So now I'm going to start working on um, 
this second term. So I'm going to break it down a little bit further. And again, we'll, we'll put all these back together in a second. So I said we needed to use integration by parts. Um, we're basically done with the integration by parts now. Now I'm just going to use a trig identity. And the thing I'm going to use the trig identity on is cosine squared x. I'm going to use a trig identity for that term. I'm not going to uh, write the first term. I'm just going to work on my, my integral here. Okay, so if we work on the second term, okay, so we pulled the n minus 1 out front. Well, here's my trig identity. I'm going to rewrite cosine squared x as 1 minus sine squared x. And remember, that just comes from the identity that cosine squared plus sine squared equals 1. All I'm doing is taking that identity and solving for cosine squared. We still have our sine of n minus 2 of x dx. And now at this point, it's just basically doing some algebra. So I'm going to distribute. So let's see, we've got our n minus 1. If you multiply 1 times uh, the sine raised to the n minus 2 of x, well, we'll just have sine of n minus 2 of x. And then if we distribute, we would have, well, a negative. Now, again, we're just going to add the exponents. So sine squared of x multiplied by sine of n minus 2 of x. Well, n minus 2 plus 2, that's just going to give us sine of nx back. And you might think, well, this is no good, right? Because we've got this, this same thing that we started with, right? We're trying to reduce sine of nx at the beginning. But that's okay. Um, you'll see that here in a second we'll collect our like terms and everything will work out nicely. So I'm just going to break this up. I'm going to distribute. So we would have n minus 1 multiplied by the first term, sine of n minus 2 of x. I'm going to tack on a dx. Then we would have minus. Okay, again, I would have to distribute the n minus 1. We'd have that. Um, we'd have the integral of sine of nx dx. Okay, so now I've kind of broken apart the second integral. So let's see, is there anything else I want to do at this point? I don't think so. I think I'm happy with what I've got. So what we've shown at this point, so what we've got so far is we've got that the integral of sine raised to the power of nx dx, we've shown that that equals, okay, well we had this first term, negative sine raised to the power of n minus 1 of x times cosine x. Again, no integral there because we use integration by parts on it. And now, let's see, so our second term, well, that's just what we expanded down here. So we said that it's going to give us our, we've got n minus 1 times the integral of sine raised to the power of n minus 2 x dx. And again, we would have minus the quantity n minus 1 raised to the power of sine nx dx. So that's what we've shown at this point. Now, all we're going to do at this point, all that's really left to do is, okay, I've got a sine of nx, sine raised to the power of nx dx on the left side. I've got this minus the quantity of n minus 1, the integral of sine raised to the power of nx dx. I'm just going to add this to both sides. So I'm going to add n minus 1 of the integral of sine nx dx. I'm going to do it the same thing on the left side as well. So I'm going to add n minus 1 times the integral of sine nx dx. And what are we left with? Well, we're left with almost what we want. So now on the left side, I've got n minus 1 of these plus another 1 of these. Well, n minus 1 plus 1, that's just going to give us n multiplied by sine of nx dx. On the right side, we're basically just left with um, the first two terms. So that's negative sine raised to the power of n minus 1 of x times cosine x plus n minus 1 multiplied by the integral 
sine raised to the power of n minus 2 of x dx. And the last thing that we need to do here now is just simply divide both sides by n. So if we divide by n, divide by n, well, we have now got our desired result. We've got that sine of raised to the power of n x dx. That's going to be negative sine raised to the power of n minus 1 of x times cosine x over n plus we would have n minus 1 over n multiplied by the integral of sine raised to the power of n minus 2 of x dx. And that is, in fact, what we set out to show. So we're finished. Okay, so again, kind of, you know, certainly a little bit long. You just have to kind of keep track of, of all your terms. Um, just use integration by parts, do a little bit of algebra, remember that trig identity, um, collecting these like terms, and we've got it. So, okay, um, that's all there is to this one. If you want to, for example, if you wanted to do the same thing, if you wanted to prove the formula for cosine raised to the power of n x dx, you would do you know the exact same thing. I mean, you, you use uh, some algebra, a trig identity, some integration by parts, and you'll get the other one as well. Um, if you all want to see it, let me know. Post something in the comments, and I'll try to get to it. Um, in the next video, I'll actually do one using this formula just so you can see how it's used. And that's all there is to it. So, okay, I hope this makes sense, and I hope it helps you out there.